on a really super fun camping trip. And I am super itchy, covered in bug bites, but it was really fun just to spend time together as a family and do some, we mountain biked and hiked and played in the river and it was great. Um, and I'd love to share with you guys the things that I've been reading. And for book club this past month, we read a book called The Splendid and the Vile, all about Winston Churchill during the first year of his, um, his term as prime minister of Great Britain during World War II. So right when Germany started bombing um, and Winston Churchill was the prime minister. And, you know, I didn't pick the book, someone else picked that book. And, you know, I always like to share with you guys what I'm reading and thinking about. And it's like, what, what can I even share about this World War II book? But this month that we've been um, talking about managing our energy, and one thing that is so crucial for us to have are habits and rituals that just make sure that we get our fundamental needs met just kind of on autopilot. Things that fill us up and things that expand us. We talked about that. Um, you know, Winston Churchill was a great example of that. Every day without fail, he took two baths. <laughs> He took one in the morning and then one in the early afternoon. Every day without fail, he took a nap in the afternoon. And even if he was on some kind of official visit somewhere else, when he went to visit France, when he came to visit the United States, he made sure that those non-negotiable parts of his self-care happened. He always got his baths in and he always got his nap. And I think that it's so crucial for us to realize that we too need non-negotiables. Things that we do that help keep us centered and that keep our bodies and our minds and our spirits functioning. Things that just happen within the fabric of our lives that help us maintain our energy. And so as you move through your practice today, we're just going to use the pause with our breath as our non-negotiable. When we get to a standing pose, we'll just pause and return to our breath. That's the non-negotiable part of this practice is that return to the breath. And think about what that is for you in your life. What are those non-negotiables that are essential to the fabric of your day for the care of your body and your mind and your spirit? Maybe those things are prayer. Maybe you have a ritual around the way you eat breakfast. Um, you know, Maybe if there's a ritual around the way you connect with your family on a daily or a weekly basis. Just think about what those things, what those non-negotiables are, because that is how we manage and maintain and sustain our energy. I'm gonna go ahead and start standing. So just come to the top of your mat, and I'll just face you for this first part. And let your feet maybe be a little bit wider than hip distance apart and close your eyes and just let yourself kind of settle into your breath and into your body. Feel your feet on the floor and just kind of start to sway and find a little movement, but just let your eyes be closed. You're feeling yourself from the inside out. You can sway from side to side. Lift all 10 of your toes as you sway from side to side. And then start rocking forward and back. You can lift heels and lift toes as you do this. And really feel your foundation underneath you.
and go ahead and stop that movement. And let your feet settle and then feel like you're drawing some energy up through the soles of your feet, lift up through your arches and some energy coming up through your legs. And then just find some little movement of your pelvis, just kind of tucking it under and then pushing it back and tucking it under and pushing it back. Just awaken through the backs of your legs, your lower back, your belly. And see if you can find a neutral place for your pelvis to rest. And so kind of in between those two extremes. And then just let yourself find some hip circles. So push out to the side and push forward. And you can let your knees bend with it. Just kind of lube up and loosen up through those joints and then switch sides. Just Go the other direction. And then go ahead and find your central place and pause. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears and shoulder blades together down and let them go down your back. And just make your shoulder circles as big as you can and you can let all the muscles work here. So often I try to just cue you to use just your shoulder blades. Go ahead and let yourself shrug. Use all the muscles of your neck, your shoulders, and the muscles of your shoulder blades. See if you can even use these muscles on the sides of your rib cage and let these circles be really big. You can exaggerate a back bend and then forward bend in that upper spine and then switch directions if you haven't. Just kind of letting your arms and your shoulders, your back and your belly get involved. And then just interlace your fingers and let yourself find some wrist circles here. Just figure eights or Each way a couple of times. And then pull, push your palms away from you. Reach high. And then once you get your arms high, try to soften your lower front ribs down and in. Release your arms and then let yourself find some neck circles. You can do just half circles in the front, or you can go all the way around and just warm up with some on the front and then add going all the way around. And a couple of times each direction. And then we'll add some side bends and really let these side bends be heavy. So start towards your right, just let yourself curve. You can start with your head and then your rib cage and really let yourself feel this through that left side and soften your knees a little bit. And then come on up. We'll just go to the other side. Start with your head and then just let your rib cage curve over. And bend and soften into your knees. And just go back and forth, just slowly here. Turn to your breath as you move. You can just connect your breath with your movement in a way that makes sense. And just notice how after we've done this a few times, you might be able to bend a little further. You're really thinking about the C-shape curve in your spine, getting space between every rib. Let's do one last time. And then just come to center, find your mountain pose and feel your breath. Close your eyes and inhale through your nose. And exhale through your nose. Two more breaths here.
And these three slow breaths will be kind of the non-negotiable ritual, the anchor that we keep coming through to as we move through our practice. Inhale and reach high. Then exhale, fold forward over your legs. And from here, inhale, find your halfway lift. And then bring your hands up to your thighs, sit down into a chair. And find some cat and cow movement here. So really stick your bum back, open your heart. And then exhale, tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin, and round. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And then come to neutral. Just bring your left hand to your lower back or your sacrum and your right hand outside your left knee and just find a twist here. And then unwind, exhale, fold forward. And inhale, lift up your left foot back into a lunge. Plant your hands inside that right foot and you can move that right foot out to the right a little bit. Bring your left knee down. And just find some hip circles here. So just push your hip back into the side and forward. And you can just move this and let it be pretty fluid. Go back the other direction. And so you'll move into that back knee, but start really juicing into that front hip and hamstring. your hands where they are and then we'll just lengthen that right leg and bend it but you're letting your right toes point to the right a little bit and just go back and forth here let's bend and then straighten that right leg your hands are inside and then just kind of wag your tail. So move your hips, your foot might kind of windshield wiper a little bit from side to side. You can see that as I move my hips from side to side, my foot's I'm just rocking on my heel. Your hands need to be on blocks. You want to be more upright, that's fine. We're just kind of getting friendly with that hamstring. And then bend into your right knee, plant your hands and come back into a table. And just a couple of times alternate lifting wrists. And then really plant your hands on the floor and think about lifting your fingers up towards your forearms. So you're really exaggerating the engagement. They probably won't lift up, but just lift your fingers up off the floor in your mind and keep that real engagement in the front of your wrist, the front of your forearm, push back into child's pose and just lift your hands. You're gonna keep the same shape and then come back up and then lift your palms and then lower down and then really flex through your wrists as you push back. Let's do that a couple of times. And then you tuck your toes, just float your knees up off the floor and find your beast. Feel like you're squeezing your hands toward each other without moving them anywhere. Just hover those knees just barely off the floor. Shorten the space between the top rim of your pelvis and your lowest ribs, your front body. And then take your knees down. Just lower yourself down onto your right forearm and then your left forearm. Bring your right hand to the floor, left hand to the floor. We're just gonna go back and forth here. Now you can keep this with your knees down or you can step back into a plank as you're moving here. Left forearm, right forearm, 
Left heel, right hand, right forearm, left. Right hand, left hand. And with our forearms on the floor, and just pause there. Put your knees down or knees up. Okay, in your forearm plank or forearm table. Knees to the floor, push yourself back into child's pose. Collect your breath. Give yourself pause here for those three breaths, that renewing ritual. After your third breath, just make your way to your downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, reach your hips up and back. I'm just gonna check in with the two different sides of your body. Come on to your tippy toes, look forward, and then to your knees, take a walk up to the top of your mat. Find your parallel feet, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to standing, reach high. Exhale, hands to your heart. Close your eyes. And pause with your three breaths. Place your hands down, inhale, reach high. Exhale, sit back in your chair again. And just let yourself hold it this time. Find that containment of your belly in a way that's really supportive but not rigid. And then feel like you're pulling your heels apart from each other and just turn on your outer hips. Maybe lift all 10 of your toes. Maybe reach your heart forward, push your thumbs back. Then we'll find our twist to the other side. So right hand to your sacrum, left hand to your outer right knee, twist here. And then exhale and fold. Bend your knees enough to bring your hands to the floor. Step your right foot back, right knee down, and you can toe peel that left foot out to the left. Hands on the floor, and then just find your hip circles here. So just push your hips from one side and forward. Just kind of floss and loop through your hips and that left hamstring a little bit. Side to side, and then a little straight and bend that front leg. So just bring that left leg forward straight and then bend. You can walk your hands back, you can be on your blocks, but we've got this left leg a little wide here. Next time we get that left leg towards straight, just lift that left, those left toes and you can rock your hips from side to side like you're kind of wagging your tail. And you can rock on that left heel a little bit. As always, you can pad your back knee if you need to. Friendly with your hamstrings. And then we'll bend into your knee. Come to your table. And this time we're going to find a little bit of buoyancy in our hands. So you can kind of maybe push up off your hands and then maybe even add a little bit of a push up. 
Just adding some load in a little bit different way. And then you could maybe play with the positioning of your hands, you can turn your fingers out, you turn your fingers in, you can stagger one hand forward, one hand back. Just get some variety in the load on your wrists. Do you play here? Just take another breath. And then pause. Sit back on your heels with your toes tucked. Just stretch the bottoms of your feet. And then make fists. Bring your knuckles together. Then we'll lean forward. Bring the backs of your fists to the floor. And then bring your arms towards straight. Keep your thumbs sealed over the front of your fingers. And stretch through your forearms. And then release that effort. I'm going to go do those plank ups again. So you can either do it from your knees, maybe if you're going to do it from your knees, you just walk your knees a little bit further back than last time, or come into a plank. Right forearm down, left forearm down. Right hand, left hand. Left forearm, right forearm. Left hand, right hand. Right, left, right. Left, left, right, left, right. And then just come down onto your forearms and pause here. Knees up or down. And then just rock forward onto your tippy toes and then push back. And then pause in the center. We're gonna rock, keep your hands as they are. Drop your left hip to the floor and tap it. And then come on up, right hip to the floor. This will work fine even if your knees are on the floor. Just rock and think of that strength right through your center. Let's go left and right. Center, knees down, hips to heels. Collect your breath here. That non-negotiable recharging ritual. It's an anchor. As you're ready, make your way to downward facing dog. And just check it out. The difference from one side to the other. Inhale onto your tippy toes. Exhale on your knees. Make your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way to standing, reach high. Exhale, hands to your heart and pause. Inhale, reach your arms high. Exhale, sit back in your chair. And then pause. We'll find our twist. Right hand outside of left knee, left hand on your sacrum, or you can bring right elbow. And just find your twist here. Draw your belly away from your thighs, lengthen out through the crown of your head. Maybe drop your hips a little. Try to keep your knees in line with each other. One more breath. And then exhale. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale your left foot back into your lunge. 
Exhale your left knee down and bring your hands inside of that right foot again. Bending into that right knee. Find just a few of those hip circles. And then just a few, just once or twice. Straighten and bend that right knee. And come forward into your left, plant into your left hand, and inhale, reach your right arm up into a twist. And then pause there. Bring your right hand down. And then really feel like you're squeezing that right shoulder into your right knee. And just open your left arm up. So big open twist. And squeeze your shoulder and knee into each other. And bring that left hand down. Inhale yourself back into a plank. And exhale to lower all the way to your belly. And release your hands behind your back or just let them come alongside your hips. Loop your shoulders up off the floor. And inhale, lift everything up. Open through your heart. Exhale, release down, bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale through plank or table. Exhale, down or facing dog. Enjoy your breath there. And then walk your feet a little closer together. Inhale to reach your right leg up and back. And try to keep your hips square with each other. Lengthen through the back of that left leg. We'll step our right foot between your hands. So lift up onto your left tippy toes. Bring your right knee into your chest. You might have to come onto your right fingertips. Step that right foot forward. Ground through your left heel and come on up for your warrior two. Just enjoy a pause here. Stretch out wide. And take a breath in. And then exhale, interlace your hands behind your back again. Draw your shoulder blades together. And then contain those lower ribs in. In. And then exhale, let yourself fold down between your legs. If your hands don't clasp, you can have hands on your hips and just draw your elbows toward each other. So you can push your inner right thigh back as you lengthen. Lift up on both of your arches. One more breath in. And then release your hands. Bring your right fingertips to the floor inside of your right foot, and then lean your right arm back into that right leg. And then let your left arm come alongside your ear for side angle pose. Really resist right knee into right upper arm. And then here you can bend that right elbow and just push your right elbow into your inner left knee. And use your leg strength. Power of those glutes to hold you up here. And come up to our warrior two. Just lead with that left arm. And pause. Lengthen through your right leg. Pull that right outer hip back. Reach, 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 and find your triangle. Push into your right big toe ball mound. Lengthen out through the crown of your head. And then heart, pull your hands down in front, to frame that front foot. Lift on your left heel and inhale to step to forward fold at the top of your mat. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way to standing, reach high. Exhale, hands to your heart. Just pause and feel.
Inhale, reach high. Exhale, sit down on your chair. Just feel your strength here. And then you can twist to your right. Right hand on your sacrum, left hand outside your knee, or left elbow outside that right knee, and bring your hands together in a prayer. So don't let your right knee come back, your left knee come forward. Try to keep your knees in line with each other. Let your belly come up off your thigh. Unwind your twist, straighten your legs, standing forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Bring your hands to the floor. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Inhale to set that right foot back. Hands inside your left foot. You can toe heel that left knee out. Bring your right knee down. And then find those hip circles here. Just enjoy kind of lubing and flossing through your joints and those hamstring muscles and then straighten and bend a couple of times. Pause in your lunge, plant into your right hand and then inhale, lift your left arm up. Find some external rotation of both of your arms and your upper arm bones, so kind of like your un or tightening the jar lid with that right arm hand. And then left hand down. Inside of that left foot, I want you to kind of push your left knee into your upper arm and push your upper arm back into your knee and open your right arm up. Exhale, hand down. Lift your back knee, step back to plank or table. Find your strength there, and then lower all the way to your belly. Interlace your fingers the unusual way with your shoulders up and back. Inhale, lift everything up. Exhale, release. Hands underneath your shoulders. Tuck your toes, push back through table, or straight through plank. Make your way to downward facing dog. Pause. And step your feet a little closer together. And then inhale to lift your left leg up and back. We'll step our left foot between our hands. And so you make this journey the way that you need to. You may just need to bring your right knee to the floor. Work on bringing your right heel up high. So high onto those tippy toes. Really round into your back as you bring your knee towards your chest. Maybe come up onto your left fingertips, set that foot forward. Ground through your right heel, open up into your warrior two. And just settle here. Feel your foundation. And then feel your center. And return to that non-negotiable of your breath. One more inhale, and then we'll exhale it. Interlace fingers behind your back, the unusual way, or hands on your hips. Draw your elbows together, open through your heart, and then let yourself find a forward fold here. So kind of inside that left leg, push your left inner groin back as you lengthen through the crown of your head. And then find some stability in your right foot. Length through your neck, let your head just hang. Let yourself be open through your shoulders. And then release your hands. You're gonna bring your left hand inside of that left foot. Maybe palm to the floor, maybe on your fingertips. And really resist your left upper arm into your left inner knee. And engage through that left glute to open yourself into side angle pose. Right arm alongside your ear. And stay here. Or bend to that left elbow 
and just float your hand up off the floor. So your, uh, the back of your elbow is pushing into that left knee and you've got some resistance there. And then cartwheel yourself up to your warrior two. Straighten through that left leg. Try your left outer hip back and find your triangle. Maybe hand on your shin, your ankle, maybe a block or a floor outside your foot. One more big round of breath. And then exhale, cartwheel that right hand down, lift your left, your back heel, and step forward. Look forward. Exhale, bow. Inhale all the way to standing, reach high. Exhale, hands to your heart, and pause. Three breaths. No matter what's happening around you, a non negotiable ritual. Release your hands. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step your left foot back and ground your heel and set yourself up for warrior one. So maybe move those right, that right foot to the right a little bit so you're more on railroad tracks. Bend into that right knee and reach high. Push down into your left heel, bend into that right knee. Arms straight up alongside your ears. And really think of lengthening through that whole left front of your body, through that left hip flexor, rib cage. Soften your lower ribs in. Maybe lift your gaze. And then exhale. Bring your hands either to your hips or interlace. Draw elbows together, open your heart. And we'll bow in a humble warrior here. You're going to lean forward. You could rest on your right thigh or bring that right shoulder down inside your right knee. And then collect that right outer hip toward the midline of your mat. One more breath. And then release your hands. Hands can come to the floor, or you can have blocks on either side of your foot or a chair in front of you. We're going to step our left foot forward about a footprint, and then draw your right outer hip back to bring your right leg straight. Maybe you need to bring your hands up on your leg if you don't have blocks. And while you're here with this straight right leg, you can do that little wagging of your tail. Just keeping your foot stable instead of swiveling on your heel like we did with our back knee down. Just getting into that hamstring and then find the center place. Push into your right big toe ball and then pull your right outer hip back. And then find some weight in your left heel and then lengthen up through the crown of your head. And from here, we'll find our Pavricha Trikonasana Twisted Triangle. So you'll ground through your left hand. Maybe your hand stays here underneath your left shoulder, or it's on a block underneath your left shoulder. Bring your right thumb into your right hip crease and pull that right hip crease back to twist your heart open to the right. Maybe bring that right arm up. And stay there. You could bring your hand on top of your foot. It's tricky for my balance. You could bring your left hand outside of your right foot. Uh, 
unwind your twist. And just take your left knee and bring it to the floor behind your right foot. And we'll sit down for Ardha Matsi Andrasana. So right foot to the floor outside that left knee. And then wrap your left arm around your forearm around your knee and push your knee into your forearm. Lengthen up through the crown of your head and maybe your right outer hip will drop. Your right sitting bone will drop to the floor. And then maybe bring your right hand behind you. You can deepen your twist a little. And then take your gaze over to that right foot, pushing through your right fingertips behind you. Unwind your gaze. Just take your right foot and cross it from that left knee. Stomp it down. We're going to fold forward, bring your hands to the floor, and then lift your left leg up into standing split or just like a one legged forward fold. Your right knee can be bent as much as it needs to be. And then left foot comes to the floor and you're standing forward, fold, both feet on the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, all the way to standing, reach high. Exhale, hands to your heart, pause. Three complete breaths with all of your attention. Release your hands. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step your right foot back, setting up for your warrior one. So maybe bring your left foot to the left a little, ground through that right heel. Push into your left heel and come on up. Reach your arms high. And into that left knee, push into your right heel. And then find that length through the front of that right leg. You're even giving a little bit of a back bend here in your warrior one. And take a breath and then exhale, hands to your hips and draw your elbows together or interlace your fingers the unusual way. Open through your heart and then fold. You can rest on that left thigh or bring your left shoulder down inside your left knee. And then contain that left outer hip toward the midline of your mat. Push into your right heel. Lengthen through the crown of your head and then let your head just relax and hang heavy. Release your hands. And then maybe take about a footprint. Um, step forward with your right foot and draw your left outer hip back to bring that left leg towards straight. If you need your hands on blocks, you might have just one, you can bring that inside your left foot. You have a block on either side, a chair in front of you, hands on your shin. Let this fold come from your hip crease and not your spine. And then you can find that little wagging of your tail here. So just moving your hips from side to side. And then just find stillness, find your pelvis centered. Make yourself full. And we'll find our twisted triangle. So right hand can stay underneath your right shoulder. So on the inside of that left foot, come up on a block. 
bring your left finger and your left thumb into your left hip crease and kind of pull that left hip crease back to twist your heart to your left. Okay, we reach left arm up. You could have your hand on top of your foot or outside of your foot. You could even have your block outside of your foot. Just enjoying that twisted triangle. And then unwind. Bring your right knee to the ground, just behind that left heel and sit back for your seated twist. Wrap your right forearm around that left knee and then push your knee into your forearm and rock that left sitting bone down. Maybe bring your left fingertips behind you, maybe deepen your twist a little and over your back shoulder. And then let your gaze go toward that left foot. Push into your left hand. And then unwind your gaze, unwind your spine. Just uncross that left foot, plant it in front of your right shin. Rock forward and then find that one-legged standing forward but reaching your right leg up. And then both feet down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, the fold. And then just toe heel your feet so they come about mat distance apart. You turn your toes out and your heels in and come down into Malasana. Hands in towards your heart. And so lengthen through your spine. Enjoy that opening that you've created through your hips. You can sway if you need to have a rolled, to roll your mat and put your heels on your mat or a rolled blanket, just to find some um, stability here, feel free. And then we'll bring our hands down and we'll step our left foot back into a lunge, a wide lizard lunge again, and you can bring your left knee down. Hands inside that right foot. And then you can come down onto your forearms or maybe forearms on a block. And let yourself breathe here. If you want to get adventurous in your lizard today, you could maybe lift that back knee up off the floor. And just let yourself gain some strength, lengthen through the front of that left hip. You could maybe snuggle your right shoulder kind of underneath your right knee. And just let your feet, your hands come outside of your feet, or maybe even let yourself float your wings for a breath or two. Just float your hands up off the floor. Just come down. Unthread your arm if you tried and play with any of that. And we'll just move into a pigeon for a few breaths. So toe heel that right foot over to your left wrist, and then you can draw that right knee to the floor. The closer your right heel is to your pubic bone, the more friendly this will be on your hip. Bring the top of your left foot to the floor. Look over your right shoulder at those left toes and make sure they're pointing straight back. And then find some energy like you're drawing your knees toward each other. And then exhale. Maybe let yourself come down to forearms. You could find a place to rest your forehead. Maybe stacked hands or forehead to the floor. Stacked wrists or just a palm to your forehead. Mm 
you can return to that ritual of your breath. Just three more breaths here. Come back up onto your hands. Tuck your back toes. You can make your way to table or downward facing dog. Find any movements through that right hip and leg that would feel good for you. And then wherever you're at, we'll just make our way back to the top of the mat. Come to standing. And you're ready. Reach high. Exhale, hands to your heart, pause. Connect to that non-negotiable ritual of your breath. And then take your feet mat distance apart, heels out, toes in, and then let yourself come down into your squat from standing. Maybe a different experience, a different entry. Let your spine get tall. into that lizard lunge on the other side. So just bring your hands down, step your right foot back, and then right knee down. Hands are inside of that left foot. Lengthen your heart. And then you can fold any amount. Maybe forearms come to a block or something, a stool or whatever you have that you can use. Maybe to the floor. If you experimented and played the first time, maybe lift that back knee and just engage and find some strength here as you're opening into that left hip. Find length through the front of your right hip. Maybe snuggle that left shoulder under. You can just bring hands to the floor, either side of that left foot. You could play with flying your left arm to the left maybe. Right arm to the right. Just unwind if you play. And we'll find that pigeon. So you'll just kind of toe heel your right, your left foot over to the right and drop your knee down. You can bring that left heel towards your pubic bone as much as you need to. You can kind of shimmy that. Right knee back. Look over your left shoulder at those right toes. Make sure they're pointing straight back. And then find some engagement of knees toward each other as you lengthen through your heart. Let yourself fold, maybe to forearms. Maybe forearms to a block or stool again. Maybe you find a place to rest your forehead. Find that ritual that non-negotiable connection to your breath. And you can think about how you can Apply that principle in your life. What are your non-negotiables? Especially when we're in times of transition or stress, any kind of upheaval, those non-negotiables become even more important. We need those anchors to sustain and renew us. Go ahead and come on up, make your way to your table or your downward facing dog. Just kind of 
Stabilize the circulation in that left leg. Get your final stretch. Whatever it feels like that you need before we transition to our backs. And then bring your knees to the floor. Just cross your ankles behind you. Swing your legs out in front of you. Scoot yourself to the middle of your mat. And then just bring your heels to the floor and let your spine get tall. You can hold on to the backs of your thighs or you can just let your arms fold or float forward. We're gonna see, use our core strength to lower down onto your back. So dial your pelvis under and engage through your belly. And then see if you can come down onto your sacrum and pause. And then one more vertebrae. One more vertebrae. And then we'll, might come to a place where they all wanna move at once. See if you can still engage, articulate. One vertebrae at a time. Come down onto your back, bend both knees, and think about lifting into your bridge that same way. One vertebrae at a time. So really push your lower back into the floor to lift your tailbone. And then lift your sacrum. And then lift your lower back vertebrae. Just one at a time. Find your mid back. Find your thoracic spine. Left and just pause for the foundation of your feet. You feel that energy of dragging your heels back towards your shoulders, snuggling your shoulder blades underneath you, finding space underneath your neck. Maybe interlace your hands, maybe just let your hands stay on the floor, grab the outer edges of your mat, push your triceps down. Connect to your breath here. Just three breaths. Lower yourself down. Hug your right knee into your chest. Let your left leg go long. And then use your left hand to steer that left, that right knee over to your left, look to your right. And come back to center. You can interlace hands behind that right leg, lengthen it long, and pause there. You can walk your hands up your thigh, hold on to your foot, just find a brief hamstring stretch and then lower that leg down bend your left knee into your chest just squeeze and then use your right hand to steer that left knee over to the right look to your left unwind and then these fingers behind that left thigh, bring that leg and towards the right, keeping the natural curves of your spine. Maybe walk your hand up your leg, maybe grab for your foot. Just take a breath in your stretch to the back of your leg. And then let your leg flow to the floor. And get your wiggles out. If you want a happy baby pose or any final movements here, just go ahead and find what it is that you need in your body. Return to that breath. This Shavasana, the ritual at the end of every practice. And these anchors allow us to integrate all of our experience. They are a connecting thread that helps us find connection between everything that we do. And give us pause to create meaning. When we have a pause,
can help us find the meaning and purpose behind all of our actions and experiences. And give us the sustained energy and strength to live with intention, to move with intention, to act with intention. So as you rest here, really just stay connected to your breath. Let yourself integrate. Feel free to stay here as long as you'd like. If you're ready to go about your day, go ahead and bring your hands to your face. You can use your palms and your eyes. Just close out all the light. Give yourself a little massage on your forehead, temples, ears, throat, neck. And nurture yourself back, find a bend in your knees, roll to one side, push yourself up to a comfortable seat. And when you get there, close your eyes, hands together in front of your heart. Just notice the quality of the energy in your body. Offer your body some gratitude. Find that inner smile. To prepare to go about your day. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.